glad that you're here, and I know we have a few more that will be trickling in tonight, um, which seems to be the norm for any meeting anywhere in the city. And uh, we do know it for a fact with the church. You know, we advertise, you know, morning service is 1130. Uh, somehow that translates to 1140, 1145 for some people. And uh, I think I've shared with some of you in different meetings, years ago our services were always at 11, like all other churches. And for about three years I threatened that I was going to change it to 1130 because certain people were late every week. And so I changed it to 1130. And guess what? They were still late by the exact amount of time. And it's always the people that live closest to the church that are late. So um, we're from all over different parts of the city. We're here. Um, we're glad to be able to host this again. So glad the BCA was able to be here tonight so that uh, others will be able to learn about what's going on. Um, it is a, a fun time. I know tonight we'll be talking about like, mostly about the expo that's coming up. We're excited about that, uh, getting the word out there. I just saw, Anne just brought to me the Chamber newspaper. Or news, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Action News, and there we were in there, so that yeah. was good. Yeah, it's not and top secret. No, no, it is not a top secret where you have to have a special invitation and special handshake to get in the door. Um, <laughs> We, we should think about that at times, but uh, we're really excited about this the, this opportunity to do it. It'll be our uh, one year anniversary of us gathering together like this, all wanting to uh, get things going for the city. Um, just so you know, with our community garden, is going to be going in again this year here. And I ordered the seeds. <laughs> Now, I can tell you there will be some seeds that we do not want. I, mean, I can't convince my wife and the ladies to ditch the kale. They want kale, and it did very well in our garden last year. Corn did, not, corn did not go very well for whatever reason. So we will have several packets of corn seeds available. and um, So we'll make those available to, well, whoever really wants them. Is the garden here? The garden is, yes, in the back part of the property. There's uh, 10 garden beds and two mounds. So we have uh, a strawberry mound, which I never go near it because I'm highly allergic to strawberries. So I don't even walk by it for fear of a reaction. But, uh, yes, yeah, so there are 10 um, above-the-ground beds. And uh, the last two years, it was very successful. Uh, we're always looking for volunteers to come and help. You know, there's a lot of work involved. Anybody that does gardening knows that. It's not really a hobby. I've, I've moved it from my hobby column to work column. And uh, But anyway, so that's... Uh, uh, my wife is making me clear out her office because I've sort of taken it over at the house because that's where she starts all the seedlings and our, you know, and in the living room. So there'll be hundreds of little containers of seeds starting. And apparently tomatoes need to start March 15th. So I've had to already clear off the bed and I got to get a table in there this weekend. Planting Just, tomatoes? hmm? You said yeah, yes, we grow them from seedling. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, in, you know, when we get stuck, if something didn't work quite right, you know, then we'd run the Nezzarellas to get stuff. But, uh, <laughs> you know, but we didn't have to do that for very many. So we're just thankful for, you know, that we're looking forward to it. It's all, the ladies enjoy it, but when they, what they really enjoy is when others come and, and help out. And some of the different gardening clubs, I mean, we've, have shared things with us and, it's really nice. I mean, it's just the community working together. We got a couple of trees up there. This year, hopefully, we'll get our beautiful benches out there. So it'll be a little park. And uh, but anyway, so that's what's happening right here. Uh -huh. And so I know, Ann, you said somebody had to 
speak yeah, early. Pat, I think we're going to have Pat Monteith come and speak. Okay. Okay, and for anybody watching um, or, you know, here. You, you can thank get there you. behind the microphone. Thank you um, for coming. Today is Thursday, March 10th. We're really excited. It reached 50 degrees. Um, the snow that happened last night is gone, people. Gone. And we hope that we're not going to see any more again for the rest of this calendar year. Uh, you know, all right, maybe two days before Christmas. But anyway, uh, none before that. But anyway, in all seriousness, um, people are getting pumped up. Uh, next week is St. Patrick's Day. And somehow that just makes everyone feel more about spring. We're changing the clocks this weekend. Yes. Ahead, people. Yes, yeah, so it'll be light out for longer, and that's really good. The sports are starting, um, and uh, rumors abound, but all good. A lot of good things are happening, and one of them is um, Dave Gorman is going to be starting his um, annual road race, and we'll be you know hearing more about that. And that's been going on for over 45 years. So you know, vol some volunteers stick it through. But I'm gonna have Pat Monteith come up because again, this is cultural affairs and tourism, and that goes the gamut for entertainment in this city. And that means sports, science, music, art, theater, and and like I said, it's just it's this the gamut. So. Um, and again, Pat Monteith being the ambassador, the NASA ambassador of the solar system and sending pictures to us from, <laughs> yeah, we'll tease everybody here about the telescope and their first uh, picture here of how they, they got the whole thing open and taking pictures of the sun. This is all pretty neat. But anyway, Pat Monteith has a whole lot of great stuff to tell us. So we're going to have her come up right now. And we want to make sure everybody, this is always free. You can come in late, you can come in early, and we, you're always welcome. So, uh, you can leave early because a lot of people have a lot of commitments. We understand that. Thank you. Thanks so much, Ann. I really appreciate it. There is a lot of things I want to talk about, and one of those things, Ann, I don't think you know about. Oh, good. But um, first of all, I do want to say that, unfortunately, because of COVID, the makerspace, the Brockton Library, which is what I manage, um, has been closed for oh, two yeah. years. Yeah. Um, we're hopefully going to be opening it up in April, Good. and uh, we're developing a partnership with the Mass Maritime Academy and maybe even Bridgewater State oh, to have the students from those two institutions yeah. come and actually run programs, makerspace programs, for middle school kids in particular. Um, so more on that. Keep an eye out on that for the you know, over the yeah, next couple sure. of weeks. Um, one of the other things that I want to mention, you were just talking in about the James yeah. Webb Space Telescope, yes. which I did a program on in October oh, at the library. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we're uh, partnering, or I'm partnering with one of the teachers at Brockton High School who uh, teaches space science. Um, and we're going to be doing a program um, on the James Webb Space Telescope, when it actually starts sending the photos back um, in June or July. So again, that's something else to stay tuned for. You know, we don't know exactly when NASA is planning to um, set, start sending those photos back, but we're going to have a program and, uh, you know, going to invite the whole community. Now, one of the other things that's going to be happening, and I'm not sure you know about this, Anne, um, and very few people know about it, but I could talk about it now because it's going to be real. Um, the library is part of their Library of Things collection. Oh, yeah, um, and I helped them write a grant to get a very, very, very special item for their Library of Things. And it's something that can be loaned out to the schools and probably some community organizations if there's enough space. But we're getting a... Um, an inflatable portable planetarium. Oh! <laughs> We're going to be able to take oh it to the schools in the, you know, the gyms and the cafeterias of the schools. We're going to take it to, you know, some of the probably the Council on Aging. I think that big room of theirs is going to be oh, able good. to fit I'm it. Old, I can go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm old, so I can run it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> So it's going to be six meters high. That's pretty high. Um, and it's just going to actually, when we have these programs at the library, it's going to just barely fit inside the lobby, the, the first floor of the library. Yeah. But then it's going to be 21 feet in diameter. Oh, 
Wow. So this thing is huge. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be able to fit uh, 40 children and probably about 20, 25 adults. Um, you know, again, it depends on what happens with COVID restrictions over the next month. Um, we just officially ordered it, oh, which is why I can you. talk about it. And I want to thank uh, Dr. Jim Cobbs over uh, at oh, the Brockton yes, Schools because yeah. he was part of the committee to help us choose the company that was going to supply the planetarium and all the equipment for it. Um, so it's been officially ordered. Uh, we expect it to be in probably in about six to seven weeks. Um, and then I've got to learn how to use it. And then <laughs> who will be taking it out to the schools and community groups and you know every place else that has the space to be able to Where's outfit the, the planetarium. <laughs> so hey, that's my news. Well, congratulations. And, and you have one more thing, announcement? Please. I have one, yeah. an announcement. Um, one of our Brockton High School students uh, yesterday was announced as the second place winner of the uh, South Shore Regional Five Science Fair. Um, so, yes. <laughs> yes. Christian Nichols is a senior at Brockton High School. He had competed last year too, but um, he's actually my mentee. Um, and uh, I worked with him um, on his project and uh, he just did a great job. He actually said to me a few days ago, I don't think I wanna win anything this year. <laughs> but you know, most teens say that. Um, but he was pleasantly surprised to receive a high second place award and he will be advancing to the state science fair um, May 5th and 6th, oh, which would wow. typically be held at MIT, but it's gonna to have to be virtual again this year because of uh, COVID and the inability of MIT to make a commitment soon enough. So that's my news. Okay, um, I just, Anything um, else? I'm sorry. What, what, what did he do to win? Oh, Christian Nichols, he did a project, a computer science project okay. um, on machine learning. It's a type of programming oh. um, on computers. Um, and what he's actually that? studying the nesting behavior of turtles <gasps> on Cape oh, Cod. Oh, that's a fun thing. Yeah, okay. so it's a fun project. It's a takeoff on a project he did last year about invertebrate fossils, um, you wow. know, paleontology, and this is the next level of that. Oh, meanwhile, you're paleontologist. Is he going to be coming and doing any presentations? Of course, always. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> my, son's my, my son's a paleontologist, <laughs> and, you know, he usually comes into the library at least once a year and does a program about dinosaurs, which is fun. And I've learned a lot about dinosaurs. I've been on some dinosaur digs on, with him. I think that is so cool, and I just, um, people realize a place gets packed. It's all <laughs> it does. ages, too. Thank okay, you very you're much. welcome. All right. I don't know. I'm going to have to do the archaeology part of it because I've done, you know, I studied archaeology and have been in some archaeological digs, not to work them, thankfully. Um, it's painstaking work, but um, when we have these space science things, it, it always excites me. Um, if you'd walk around here into our research lab, you would see all kinds of computers, very big computers which I received as part of a grant from the Smithsonian Astrophysics Lab at Harvard. So every workstation is like a server. And uh, they had one iMac that they included in there, they threw in, and what they forgot to do was to wipe it. And they had no password on it. This was, and so it was very interesting but on it, I found some early Hubble telescope photographs on it, which I have archived. And uh, again, space has been one of those things that's always fascinated me. And I'm thinking about your planetarium. Does it have to be done indoors or can it be done outdoors? It has to be indoors? Yeah, the um, material for the, the dome won't, uh, won't handle the outside. Okay, well, that... We would have oh, had to spend another $10,000, which we didn't have. Yeah, okay. Oh, hold on a second. I'll just write it. No. <laughs> write a check and change the order. But, no, that is... I, I'm looking forward to seeing when those are... When it's going to be up, because that is absolutely fascinating. To somebody, to somebody. So, congratulations and all that. 
Um, <laughs> you know, the, yeah, the, the council on aging first. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it, it will really fill up that room, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, they yeah. Out yeah, I think they're going to have to really be careful where the doors are to get into this thing because... Uh, I've been I've been there and lectured a couple of times, so it's tight. It's yeah. tight but uh, oh, it's, uh, it's it's the height. Yeah. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. So that's wonderful. Great. That's great news all around. All, all right. Stuff. See, all good right. stuff happening in Brockton. Yeah. Imagine, imagine, all done by volunteers. Okay, everyone needs to understand that. Okay. Meanwhile, we have another special guest this evening. And uh, this is International Women's Month. Let the record show women get a whole lot done. Um, anyway, um, Eldels is here. And uh, one of the reasons I, I want to highlight this is Eldelsa has a special position that never had existed before. I mean, COVID was bad for so many reasons. But what it did was spin off some needs that people never realized existed and to the magnitude that the need, you know, existed. And Eldels is going to be talking about opportunities for grants, both COVID-related and not, and um, how she's available and can connect you up with various languages too, even though she speaks about four herself. And uh, what um, happens here with helping people navigate to establish their businesses and keep them maintained and other, um, how would I say it, um, situations that arise and restrictions and requirements and regulations that are necessary. So I'm going to let Eldelsa, and Eldelsa works in downtown Broughton, even though she goes all over the city all the time to uh, meet with you if, if the need be, because the whole idea is to keep businesses th open and thriving. And if you have to close your business, come and see her, that doesn't make sense. So um, she does, you know, come and visit you. So I'll let Eldelsa do all the speaking now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Anne, for quite the introduction. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, but I'm here to serve, and I'm here. Uh, I'm happy to be part of the uh, Brockton community, working with the uh, with the city of Brockton in assisting business in Brockton. There is a great need of new business to connect with resources, and uh, uh, the first step is really understand what are the needs, what are the assistance that, what type of assistance they have, they need. So we can find them and really build the bridge that will allow them to have access to those resources. Um, this is something that I've been doing in my now almost, uh, I would say, nine months in the position. Yes, yes. Since day one, I started to um, knock the doors, connect with business, and uh, hold the events. Uh, I held the events where I invite a lot of business to participate. We had a woman-owned business celebration. We have Brockton Business Conversation really a platform for business to talk about their needs and connect to a great opportunity for networking. But we also bring uh, special guests. We brought people from the states to talk uh, about uh, opportunities available. I want to tell you about some of the things that we did that really impact business. So the Small Business Administration had um, a grant available for business as well as loan, part of the disaster loan program. So only during the month of, the month of December, I was able to uh, work with 30 business to apply. And I can tell you that between loans and grants, uh, business that I work with were able to get almost $2 million in terms of uh, assistance. Um, and we, it could be more. So we need more people in this position to work and be able to reach out more business. We understand the need is uh, greater than we think. I want to emphasize that there is like lack of literacy. A lot of business really need the help to go uh, deeper in understand the content of the application and uh, uh, have someone that can even help them at navigate the application process and the system. Um, it takes a lot of work, but also we are trying to partner with a lot of organizations to put together trainings to allow business to really have access to what it takes to run a business successfully and be able to uh, get access to the resources. I can tell you right now we are working with, with NeighborWorks. We put together um, a training. NeighborWorks actually is running the program um, through uh, Patricia White Trish. She's amazing, and she has the special 
uh, what it really takes to connect with business. So she's putting, uh, she's uh, the instructor of the program that called Building a, a Better Business in Brockton. Um, it's a three session. Actually, we're gonna have more sessions. It's been a lot of people sign up for the for the session. So um, we will be able to, uh, she will be able to uh, provide more class. Three sessions where business will uh, uh, have class, uh, two hours class and after uh, complete the three, uh, the three class. Um, that are run on Tuesdays from two uh, from six to eight, they will be able to apply for a fifty thousand dollar loan. That is a result of uh, venture loans programs that uh, like uh, different banks, five banks uh, uh, work together to bring this loan. And uh, it's not a loan; it's a loan available also for new business for people that are looking to start a business. So it's a great opportunity on top of all the information that business can get. Uh, something really new that I really want to work with business to apply for is a new grant uh, uh, program, actually two new programs from the Massachusetts Growth Capital Corporation, part of the re um, recovery plan. So uh, business can get up to $75,000 in grant uh, um, if they apply, as long as you've been in business since uh, June uh, 2020, uh, you have your 2020 tax, you can apply for this, and you have a two uh, full-time employees. You need to have a two full-time uh, employees to apply for this. I'm available to assist you with the application. Um, there is a lot of information out there, so if you need to uh, learn more about it or you need assistance to apply, you can reach out to me. Um, my cell is 508-818-1770. Uh, Call me, leave a voice message, leave a text, and I'll make sure that I get back to you and we will work together. Um, I'm, I keep saying I'm here to assist, so please take advantage uh, of me. This is my job here, something that I really um, have a great pleasure to do. Uh, I really see, want to see business in Brockton to prosper and take advantage of all the opportunities available. I'll make myself available to also provide you information about all the grants and funding opportunity available. Once we connect, I'll make sure that I'll always send you information, try to get information in first hand. Again, we are in the process of building great partnership and bring information, uh, workshop, a lot of um, information session about uh, what's available out there for business in Brockton. And I really want a business in Brockton to understand a lot of the opportunities out there are designed for community like Brockton. So uh, it's important uh, what we see, the need of business getting the information in, on time so they can apply, understand what it takes for the application, and also uh, be able to advocate to make sure that uh, the application is something accessible and tangible for business in Brockton. If you have any questions, so I left my phone number, I'll be here as, as well to answer to them. Thank you. Thank you. I can, I can attest to it. She works really hard. She goes out in any kind of weather, <laughs> especially when it's freezing. She said, but no, seriously, in her event back in December, recognizing small, you know, woman-owned businesses, and the place was packed, and it was in downtown. She does work downtown, but I cannot emphasize enough that um, people can, you know, um, contact her, 508-818-1770. This position has never existed before. This is um, part of the Brockton Redevelopment Authority. So when she she says she works for the city, she does because it's, um, how would I say it, a collaboration with the Brockton, you know, uh, planning department, the, the government, and the grants of state and federal and again, um, there's various loans too that, that fall under and brought to redevelopment authorities under the federal, you know, so you're dealing with all three levels of government. And uh, she has had, I will say, I went to the training and it was amazing how people talked about, you know, these are people are educated and they said it was unbelievable to navigate some of these forms that they had sent out and these people had been losing 
tons of money during COVID. And here they were, you know, stuck filling out these forms. They had minimal deadlines, et cetera. So again, that she's been able to really change that up and she is committed. Believe me. Meanwhile, um, there's so many, like I said, so many things as we get, you know, talking about, I mean, this weekend there's a concert at First um, Evangelical Lutheran Church Free, 3 p.m., part of local cultural council sponsorship. And this one's different. It's called Irish, Jewish, and Ticklish. This one's, uh, and again, there's constantly something transpiring in this community that, um, and eight out of ten times, it is free. And I'm going to let um, Frank come up here because he has something that's a little bit, um, you know, oh, you, you want to hold off to the end? Yeah, you didn't want it. Oh, okay. No, no, but you wanted to talk. We're um, talking about a time capsule here in the community, so we definitely want your input. We're in the fourth, you know, stages of it. And uh, we're very excited about it. And we said, well, what are you doing it for? Well, first of all, we're doing it because um, the city hasn't had one in decades. And also because there's a whole lot going on that in 50 years might not look a thing like this, except maybe for that special planetarium. <laughs> They'll be floating around. But anyway, um, Dr. James Bruce came in, and he has an event coming up. So I should let you speak, and then we'll have everyone else um, come up. And while I'm up here, though, I want to mention um, Garden Club has an event. Um, they're meeting March 28th, Our Lady of Lords, 7 p.m., and it's a workshop on succulents, and um, the door, um, what do you call it, the fee is $10, and they're always looking for new members, young, old, and everything else in between. So uh, for more information on that, um, you can check out their website, BroughtonGardenClub.org. But also, uh, this has been around, and BCA is so good to us, and we just put up a PCA that should be, PSA, excuse me, that's popping up, and you'll see what the Garden Club did er last month, and it had to do with making seasonings and all the herbs and spices. So there you go, gang. All right, so I'm going to have you come up, Dr. Good evening, everyone. I am indeed so happy, so happy to be here at uh, this beautiful evening. I always look forward to these uh, great meetings and where we can get to know firsthand what's happening in the Brockton area. I'm here in, uh, in two veins, one being um, on behalf of Team Veronica Cancer Resource Center. Team, Ver Team Veronica Cancer Resource Center was, um, I established or I founded it in uh, September last year, um, be, uh, in response to my the loss of my baby sister, she and I were so close. She was 48 years old. She passed from um, passed away from double breast cancer, and I, it was just moved upon me that, and I understood that now that she's gone and she left behind what I consider a living spirit of love, peace, and compassion for others. Now, although the cancer uh, affected her, but at this point, it's really not about her. It's about all those who will struggle, who are struggling now to understand it, to know more about it, and how to handle, how to avoid it, and also how to live their life to improve their quality of life. And so this uh, um, Cancer Resource Center is just moving really, really fast. And so in less than five good months, we have a, an office space. It's at uh, 33 uh, Dover Street, uh, Suite 326. On the, um, we've had already, we're coming up upon our fifth event that already uh, we had. Um, October 24th, our, last year, we had a, a cancer walk awareness in the DW Field Park. And then on um, December 23rd, we had a formal banquet where we honored and showered and celebrated cancer survivors. So that was a great, wonderful opportunity to allow cancer survivors to share their testimony, share their So We realized that they hold the key to hope. And it was through those testimonies they were able to share and pour out and tell and give kind of like a reaction as to what their response was when they heard it. They were able to denial, they accept it, and how they moved on. And we have some uh, members, uh, some cancer survivors. One lady survived 21 years now. And um, she just tells a story how she just faced it, you know, hit it face on. She was positive about it. She said, no, this is not going to take, care, take, take me away. And so she was really positive about it. So hearing those great words from her encouraged a lot of people. And then on uh, Valentine's Day at the office, our new office, we um, had a, I call it a Valentine's Day of love, where we once again showered 
and uh, we really showered the cancer survivors with flowers and chocolates and cards. And this was that moment to, again, to impress and transfer and share my sister's love that she had. Uh, just really compassionate about people, and she had such a special love. And that, so th doing this keeps her alive in my spirit, in my life. And then the uh, next event after that was February 16th, which happens to have been her birthday, her 49th birthday. And we had our official office opening and ribbon cutting ceremony. And so we were so honored to have the mayor, uh, State Senator Brady, and four of the city councilors come and cut the ribbon. So we were just so deeply honored by that. And so that leads me up to the next event. And so our whole idea is to continue to be in the lives and be in the front in the faces of cancer survivors not just cancer survivors, but also supporters and caretakers. Because if we can support a caretaker, that lifts that person up. The person now has the courage, the energy, the strength, the determination, and also the support to uh, support the person who is going through. So this uh, next event is going to be on a Saturday, April 16th. And we, we call it a spring is in the air day. We know spring is a time when everybody can't wait to get out and enjoy themselves, and it's also a sign of sign of life and you know uh things you know when, when flowers come out and so we want to welcome and uh welcome cancer survivors and the supporters and families just to come on out and we're going to celebrate life we're going to celebrate the spring with a candle lighting and the candles again represents a lot of things peace serenity and the sacrifice so we want to look at that and this is going to be at um, brockton community access at number one main street and it's, it's a real short program it's from 12 to 2, okay. 12 to 2 on a Saturday, and we're just going to invite, if you know someone who uh, is going through, just want to just come out for the day and just, just, just mingle and maybe have an opportunity to share, you know, what their experience is. For a lot of us, you know, it's spring, is the time to get out. Those masks are off for now, <laughs> uh, hopefully for good, but they're, they're off and we're out of the houses and we're just freely, uh, at this point, I can tell you just how I feel, right? I just feel so liberated right now so free i mean the last time i was here last month i had the mask on could barely talk and be understood so i'm just really really happy and just grateful and you know certainly in the house of god and in or out i, I always give god praise for his uh protecting and keeping power to keep us healthy and strong and keep us safe and so uh, again once invite those who are um, listening and, through, uh, and watching through uh, uh, Brockton Community Access and also those to uh, spread the word. And it is a free event. And again, we have refreshments and this is really an opportune, opportune time to do that. And the quick announcement in advance is that on May 12th, and we're gonna have a Cancer Resource Expo. Oh, nice. Cancer Resource Expo. And that's gonna be held at Teen Challenge in, uh, here in Brockton on Main Street. Yeah. And that uh, event, and it is being planned right now, we're inviting almost every aspect of the community. Housing, insurance, uh, okay. employment, job training, uh, funeral homes, churches, and uh, movers. And you can almost imagine. So the idea, the strategy is this, to create a venue. Now, again, people can come out and begin networking in advance for those who are surviving, those who are struggling. So in advance, so maybe two years from now, you might, that person may finally ne now need to downsize. Maybe go through some re-engineering around banking or whatever. They can say, hey, Joe, remember we met at that thing? So it's in advance. So at that time, they're not rushing and panicking, making rash decisions and stuff. So I'm like thinking in that, in that respect. And also it gives them uh, an opportune time to really get information. That's what Anna's always talking about. Just get information. And once you know it and you use it, it's great. And so um, thank you for your listening. Um, but you'll hear, learn more about the, um, the expo that's coming up. And, okay, uh, you have some, and the number you can reach me, and I'll give you a personal number, 617-259-4398. And I'm also, one last plug, I am also happen to be the owner and um, the uh, operator of uh, Printed Expressions and Gifts. It's a custom printing shop right next to Dairy Queen, just three, two blocks away. And um, my second year, second year, and that's considered, I consider my zone, zone of like creativity. And just for, in the spirit of uh, International Women's Month, and I think okay. yesterday was the day, I was just thinking, and, and I'm always getting these great ideas, I think. And I was like, and I really, I love women. I'm not a womanizer, but I love women. I love 
mothers and I love daughters and I love just women. And I just, I, I honor you as women. I just really, really, really honor you. And, uh, you know, just from just being natural and understanding, it's a tremendous beings. You're my mom, your sister, you're just so, so I thought of this idea. And I, I really, and I'm not just, I'm just playing with this. I really feel that in which all the stuff is going on, it has been going on forever. God knew what he was doing, right? <laughs> when, he, when he made you. And so I designed these this afternoon. And it says, and it says, can you guys see that? To really fix the world's problems, put mothers of young children in charge. They have love and compassion for life. Well, I am sure a really lot powerful? of people would quit. And, and, I, and I think, I th and this is really, this is, I, I think, really deep. And it sounds like a cliche, but it's true. Because if you, you can get rid of all the school issues, because they're there teaching the kids from when they're born. Mm -hmm. get, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> not that one. Sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. I'm sorry. And, and then, um, but again, I really. In terms of, you, you take it in every, every sector of society, yeah. the politics, everything. Because they, women, especially mothers with young children, they're going to avoid the fights. You know, they will, they will do what to avoid, thank you. Yeah. They will do what to avoid the fights and the confusion. Yeah. Said, because for the sake of the children. Yeah. I can remember my mama had 10, 10 children. She said, my mother had 10 children. She said, constantly, stop fighting your brother. Stop, you hug each other, you know. So it was all about peace, and I really believe that. And uh, so that's uh, my creative side. I, love it. I did one in um, two colors, yeah. one in purple, and the sure. one in black. Yeah. It's, it's really nice. And so I love really, really it. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so, so, so I invite each of you all, just a little yeah. plug here, I invite each of you to visit me in my shop and appreciate you so much. Yes, sir. So custom express that business, that's what they do. Printed expressions and gifts. Okay. Yeah, we're right next door to uh, Dairy, Dairy Queen. Queen. Yes, sir. Just down the street, two blocks. North Main on street. the green. North Main street. I, I have a um, I have a grandson, a four year old grandson. His name is Chase. He called me one day. He's at home. He said, Papa, I saw you in your greenhouse. <laughs> so that was it. So that's our joke. And it's uh, it's a green building just uh, next to it. Thank you so much for your uh, your attention and uh, please show up for the candlelight. All right. Thank yes. you so much, Anne. Oh, no problem. Okay. So let's keep on promoting all the positive here. Again, um, I'm laughing because, of course, I'm always thinking of snacks. And the Dairy Queen will be opening up real soon. Yeah. Yeah, this, yeah. I get the important stuff here, people, you know. Um, but um, Eldelsa here had something else. And uh, this is, again, a collaborative. And this one is also included with Old Colony Planning Council. And Broughton is in your hands. Download the app, hashtag Broughton, City of Champions, and on this app, and I believe if I'm, you can put your business, put your restaurant, put, um, you know, various, you know, affiliations, view news and events, and uh, there's a variety of information on here, but uh, download the app today, um, App Store. Uh, it shows the little Apple there, and Android, Google Play, and, um, I'll, you know, I'll hold this up too. Um, and um, again, uh, Eldelsa can help you navigate this. Old Colony Planning Council can. There's like this little hub there with Eldelsa, BRA, Metro South Chamber, Old Colony Planning Council, and then just zipping around. You've got the Small Business Association that comes in, and then Massachusetts program with M Margaret, and uh, yeah, they're, they're incredible over there um, helping things out. So again, Hashtag Broughton City of Champions. Download the app and you're going to know all kinds of good stuff. Now, um, Felicia has come to a couple of these meetings in the past, but she brought a little bunny with her. <laughs> so, so, see, I'm, I'm half um, you know, kidding here. But anyway, we love guests. So come on up here, gang. Let's go talk about things. Yeah, all positives, all positives. And give us your name and phone number. Yes. She should have. She should have warned me that I was coming up here. Oh, and talk. oh okay. no, 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 you weren't no. checking now. <laughs> I, 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 didn't, I didn't tell him, so okay. we're here. She caught me off guard. She okay. caught me off surprise. Good. So here we go. But uh, yep. but my name is Zico and Tunes, and uh, I work with uh, Vitra Health. I am the community liaison oh. for for the area of uh, of Brockton. 
Yeah. I recently joined uh, Vitra uh, since, I would say, since July of last okay. year. Okay. And uh, I previously wor worked uh, uh, with uh, Adult Day Health in, in the city for five years. And uh, oh, but before, before then, I worked with uh, Signature Medical Group as a medical interpreter. So I've been in the city for, for quite some time now, uh, working in the community. Uh, mostly with uh, Cape Verdean community, Spanish also, because I speak mm -hmm. both both the language. And uh, Felicita joined the, the, the liaison team since what, since uh, August? August, yes. August. She's perfect at it. She's all over so the place. Yeah. She, she, she's <laughs> very well known in the community. So uh, very well known and, and, and uh, respected. Yes. It's, it's a pleasure to, to work together, to uh, be part of part of the team. So uh, I, in the beginning, I mostly worked with the uh, opening of the adult adult day center. And where was that? That is uh, on um, at 10 North Pearl Street. Okay. Recently opened since since uh, August, and uh, they accepting uh, new participants uh, now, and uh, the program is is grown. Each day is grown. You know, it's a good good asset for for the community, for especially for the elderly. Especially yeah, no, at, the, at the COVID, you know, they spent all day in the house and they couldn't get out, so now it's a place they can go. That's, that's, a, that's, that's, another, yeah. that's another option, and it's also multi multicultural. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and staff is trained to assist with also dementia and uh, Alzheimer and, uh, and uh, blind wheelchair bond and all of those uh, kind of uh, participants that... Uh, would like to join the program. The staff is well qualified to to handle it. And um, but myself and Felicita, we most we mostly focus now on on the adult family care program that we also have. And uh, it's so if you take care, you know, your family, you know, a family member, you know, like your mother, your father. You know how many people I met and said, "Do you take care of someone?" And they're like, "Oh yeah, I've been taking care of my my sister for like ten years, but don't get paid." Mm -hmm. Now you can get paid for it's a program now on the myself that it's you can get paid wonderful. for. Now. It's yes. it's 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 a it's a great pro program. program and, yes, uh, and, and you can help people navigate the forms and everything else. Oh okay. yes, that's what's half the problem is with these forms. Yes. So, so yes, basically, uh, basically we we all over the city. We go to clinics, uh, Good. hospitals, uh, housing complex. Okay. We do table time. We do a lot of activities uh, in the community with uh, with. Uh, housing authorities yeah. you know we, we Wait, just we, we're just here to help families take care of their sure. elderly okay and how can people so, get a hold of you so they can they, they can call me by reaching me at 71 okay. uh, 917 6772 that's my work cell phone okay and they can also reach me on the email zico zico dot and tunes a n t u n e s at vitrahealth.com and he's mostly he's the one in Broughton, so he you know people will go to That's him right, in Broughton. That's right, because I know you're in New Bedford. New Bedford and Far River. River. Okay. Yes, I'm in New Bedford. Yeah, you live in Broughton, but you're down in Far River. Yes. Okay. Yes. But um, it, I think it's important for you to mention that at the various events that transpire in the city, especially as it gets mild around, you've been around for the what do I want to say the summer concert series. Yes. And yes. you've set up a table. Yes. And, um, we were just at City Hall too, just before winter. Yeah. They had they yes, had an were. event yeah. there on a Saturday morning. Yeah, you were freezing to death. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we basically, that's that's yeah. that's what we're going to be doing in the community. Great. We look forward to do that. There is a there is a budget in place to to help co coffee hours. Uh, yeah, we okay. Yeah, we can do you coffee you hours. You name it. There, there's a lot of good things that. That we that we can do in the community, especially for the, for the elderly ones, uh, or someone with with a medical condition. Serious, it's a good, it's a yes. So we're taking from 16 years old to. Okay. 16 to. Hundred. Okay. Hundred plus. Okay, hundred very plus. Very good. Uh -huh. Very so. good. Okay. Um, we we're very glad that you're here, and we hope that you become part of the expo that we're having. Well, thank that was what I was just about. Thank, thank you very much. We, thank you very much. We'll we 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 appreciate it. We you guys anything you need. We, we appreciate you to uh, All right. to welcome us on on, oh, on, yes. on board. We okay. we actually we were actually yes. on on the meeting. I was on the meeting a couple, couple weeks ago. Um, there was a Zoom meeting. 
as well. Adassa, you were on the meeting. Yeah. So we we will try to uh, to be connected with uh, different 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 programs in the city because we are just another one here in the city to provide good services so we to are the, for community. the community. Um, much appreciated community. So, yeah. and very well, um, how I say, and much to me. And very we got a question. Oh, yes. What's the name of your organization? Vitra Health. How do you spell it? Oh, V-I-T-R-A Health, Vitra Health. Oh. Yeah. I've, I also have my, 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 my business card. Right. If you, so pass it around. If, yeah. you, if you're All interested. Right. So we want to make this formal, yes. that you are invited to be here yes. for the 26th. Yes. And have a table. We're going to be downstairs. We're going to be downstairs. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That's, my, that's my email. You can yeah. email me Great. if I have to yeah. register or anything. Like, um, yeah. I'll do more than that. If I was smart enough to run up my cards, yeah. 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 I yeah. would yeah. give you yeah. more. Yeah. 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 Good night. Thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Jackson. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Um, since Emma is behind the camera, not in front of it, um, people don't realize Brockton Community Access is in fact that. For the Brockton and in the community, and it is access. They can be reached at 508-580-2228. And as uh, Dr. James Bruce had mentioned, he's doing his event there on, um, I'm sorry, um, April 16th, uh, again, Broughton Community Access will work with you. We just had a book sale there, and um, the people were packed to the max, and, and the turnout was incredible. There's a ton of parking. There's handicap accessibility. Um, we we were, had previously attended, prior to that book sale, a phenomenal event um, with um, the African American Association of Broughton, and that was beyond packed to the max. The music, the dancing, everything else. Again, all this is for all ages, all backgrounds, all kinds of programs and projects. So as I always say to people, there's a trillion things going on that are positive in Broughton. Uh, spread the word, Broughton Community Access does public service announcements. Broughton Community Access will allow you to have uh, learn about taping your own programs. Oh, and get this, not that I'm the expert by any stretch of the imagination, but they do podcasts. And you would not believe it. Oh, by the way, the place is open seven days a week. Um, more Monday through, hours Monday through Friday. And they will teach you the cameras, teach you how to do the program, uh, work with you with the podcast, PSAs, and they will, you can send them email blasts for, uh, and they can put it on, I'm going to call it, I used to call it the uh, scroll, but now they refer to it as the calendar. And also, like I said, there's so many things going on as um, things continue to open up. Yes. And uh, one of them being that there is a, what am I going to call it, uh, an invitation to submit your poetry, there's a, you know, a process for the Youth Poet Laureate, and that apparently is an individual under 22 years old and over 15, 16. And uh, yes, uh, there's a little bit you know, more steps to that, but um, you can find out about that at Broughton Community Access or watch the channels, at Channel 9, Channel 12, and Channel 98. Channel 98 uh, is school, and uh, the phenomenal, amazing uh, champion athletes. And um, also you get the other stuff like school committee and all that too. But um, Channel 12 is government. And you are seeing more and more, and this, this I will thank them over and over again, the various meetings that go on, because we're trying to explain to people, governing body is both the um, city council and these various boards, commissions, and entities that, you know, authority, one is its parking authority, and you're appointed through the mayor and voted on by city council to be on these particular boards if you express an interest. Zoning Board of Appeals, a few people aren't here tonight because they're at the Zoning Board of Appeals, where you can speak in front of people 
that are part of the governing process that make it decisions that dramatically affect your life. And this can be, this is the case for the planning board. Um, uh, sometimes it's a little bit lighter and more fun, like parks and recreation, where you want to find out about having um, you know, your team play at one of the playgrounds, you know, what baseball, what have you, which uh, all these signups are beginning kicking off. And uh, again, there's so many things going on here and we can't thank you enough. What we really want to emphasize now is we really want you to be interested and um, how would I say, uh, be part of the expo. It's free to attend. It's free to participate. There's also plenty of parking here. It will take place at North Baptist Church to celebrate one year of cultural affairs and tourism in the city of Broughton, where we've had as many as 30 people in a room and as you know, small as seven. But that's what it's all about. We have meetings once a month, except for December. And they're usually, unless it's a holiday or a blizzard, um, on uh, the second Thursday of the month, beginning at 6 p.m. You can come late. You can leave early. This is not a nonprofit. This is an opportunity for nonprofits, volunteer-based groups, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, whatever, to come and announce what's going on. Invite us to your event. And um, how would I say it? Support each other. And this is radical, communicate, okay? Again, uh, you want an event at Broughton Community Access, learn more about them, give them a call. Cassie's the membership and outreach coordinator, 508-580-2228. They answer the phone after 10, and they're there till mm, eight and nine at night. And um, they're out on the road too, won't lie to you. And just like Emma is tonight, we can't thank her enough. And um, as far as announcements go, have I missed any? DW Park is mobilizing their outdoor activities, so we'll have more about that. I'm going to let Pastor, um, you know, speak again. He's the host. We were lucky. He, you know, invited us to be here and meet, and this was last year when you know, COVID was still in full blast, and now that things are opening up, we're going to have more and more people coming and talking about their great stuff. So, again, thank you, and my name is Ian. If you have any other questions, 774 Two nine seven four nine three nine. Thank you. Okay. The more and more I hear about what people are doing here in the city of Brockton is it's pretty amazing, and uh, hearing about you know the adult care you know program that is something that is you know desperately needed to expand. Uh, it's something that touches directly to my own family. Uh, my youngest son, when he was 15 years of age, um, was working, help, helped take care of a paraplegic, brain damaged gentleman. And, you know, there was all kinds of different organizations involved, but he was hired to go in and spend three to four hours a day with him to take care of him, to, you know, get him up in the wheelchair, get him to the bathroom. All that kind of stuff. So in my own family, at 15 years of age, I had a son doing that, and uh, you know he was able. Billy was able to live at home. Now all his caretakers have passed away, and he is now in some home somewhere. And you know we've lost touch with him. But again, it's like individuals making a difference. Now, I'm hoping I can pull something up up here. But I do want to give us a real plug for the expo. I think we have eight or nine organizations that have already committed to being here and uh, anticipate that we might get a few more because that would be absolutely wonderful. Um, I've done a number of these in the city and been so thrilled with what we've been able to accomplish with them. And I am not seeing it here. Oh, that's not good. I was hoping to be able to show us our new logo. <laughs> so we actually came up with a logo for the group. And for whatever reason, this computer did not update to the OneDrive the way that it was supposed to. So... Let's see, do I send it anywhere else? I guess I don't. 
Well, that's a shame because I would have loved to have been able to show that tonight. Um, but, you know, yeah, next month it'll be the screen. It'll be up on the big screen. Um, we'll have it, trying to show it on the, uh, at the uh, expo. We're looking to get a banner printed so that people will know where to go in. It is going to be on the side door. So off of the parking lot um, is where it'll be. It'll be down in the lower uh, level. And um, unlike our Irish concert, which you will soon see on Channel 9 and uh, YouTube at VCA, um, it will be warmer. Um, I had to try and sell everybody on the idea. For some reason, the heat did not kick in the way it was supposed to. And so I kept convincing several times to people that it was 23 degrees warmer inside than it was outside. That's, uh, you know, I, I had to try and market it that way. Um, I was comfortable. I was in a short sleeve shirt and there were several people that were really still in their parkas. Um, but this, this is my Canadian blood. You know, I wear short sleeve shirts all year round. And today, it was close that time for shorts to come out because we hit 50 degrees, but uh, that didn't happen. But again, just want to encourage people, you know, tell others about it. Um, we're going to be printing up some more flyers and we want to get them out there. Saturday, March 26th. Yeah, yep. Sa for that Saturday. Saturday. It's going to be a great time. Uh, BCA is going to be there with a table yep. and they're going to be there with a camera crew. So and so prepare something. Or just tell me. You're registered. <laughs> All right. You're registered. Okay, you're registered. We make things imp simple. None of these complex forms. You know, it, it, it's, we just keep it simple. Um, that is a, a, a way that we operate. This group for a year now has operated on that principle, just keep it simple. There's no leadership. I'm not in charge. Anne's not in charge. You know, it's, it's the community. And I say, you know, we've had a number of groups represented throughout the year and really looking forward to this expo. Um, I was part of one several years ago, pre-COVID, and it was a huge success. Um, and that's what we're anticipating this time as well. Now, I said it was a huge success last time we did one. But to me, it was a disappointment, as in the number of people that actually came in from the outside. The huge success was the fact of meeting with the other vendors and getting to know what was really out there in the community. That part was a huge success. And we want that part of it, but we also want the part of people coming in and learning what's going on here you know, in Brockton, like, you know, how many people know that there's a gift and print shop, you know, just down the street here next to Dairy Queen? I do. That's because I live on the other side of Dairy Queen. <laughs> right down here, yeah. Yep, so, I mean, again, it's... The word, word of mouth is the best advertising... Um, I know it, I'm thrilled when I start seeing some of these grants that are coming available and, uh, you know, I'm looking at them and I'm going like, man, I don't qualify for any of them. You know, I'm not woman. I'm not a woman owned business. So that eliminated me from any of those grants. And then there's others that's like, but then I look at what through COVID, how many companies and businesses struggled during COVID. It's unbelievable. But I just started looking at what my business has done. And from pre-COVID to now, I've had a 500% increase. Because people need IT. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, people need IT. You know, but it's hard to believe that that's, when I was sitting there doing the math, trying to figure it out, it's like, that's 500%. And that's like, that's, that's, a, happy, that's a happy story. Yeah. You know, because of what we've been able to do with it. And even as a church, you know, we are one of the smallest churches in Brockton. 
Now our building is large and we have a lot of stuff going on here and a lot more will be going on. But, uh, you know, we, we host a genealogy club now that, that's going to be meeting here. We offer genealogy, ser genealogical services. We have a research library, one of the largest in South Shore area. We have it right here. Um, now we'll say it publicly. <laughs> we haven't said it publicly before, but we are the winter practice home for the Brockton Bruisers, the Roller Derby League. <laughs> they, they, they may be here on the, at the expo. Um, so there, there, there's, there's a lot of things that are going on here in the city of Brockton, and a lot of things are happening right here. Again, you know, a lot of people look at it, and I've been asked many times, like, how in the world does your little church do these things? Well, it's because we think outside the box. We are, we, we don't just think outside of the box for here in the city of Brockton, but as a church, we give to missions. Most churches give to missions something, but usually from what my research has been, it's just a token. Last year, this little congregation gave 43% of its income to missions. And uh, later on in this month, there's <coughs> going to be a computer school open in Manipur, India, oh, wow. that we provided all the resources for, and they're going to name the school after me. Oh, <laughs> that's so that's kind of cool. I wrote the curriculum, provided the computers, and so that's kind of a neat thing. But um, we helped the, we helped them start a seamstress school, nice. so they are training people. We there we go. We actually have one of our missionaries in Cape Verde. You know. So again, there's, there's so many things that are happening out from Brockton, but it's happening all over the world. We're able to make an impact. And yet we still have a hard time making an impact in our own community. And so that's what this expo is all about. So I want to encourage everyone to tell people about it. Don't, don't just come and have a table. Tell people, come see me at this expo because you can meet everybody else. Yeah. Frank, did you um, get a commitment from the bruises to be at the expo? I will know this Saturday. So, you know, that would be great if the roller derby team could push you up. Design that you just came up with today. Yeah, you know, so that's just how this group yeah, works. Yeah. Um, that's how you connect with one another. Yeah. It would be a great statement to put out there. And it just, it just happens. Again, that, and again, that's how most of this has happened. It's just how it seems to be happenstance, but it's not. It's ordered, we, you know, and again, it's made some really good connections across the board to help make a difference here in the city of Brockton. And uh, I don't know, you know, Senator Brady and I, we disagree on just about everything, but it seemed like three weekends in a row we saw each other, you know, in different, in different, you know, venues. One saying farewell to Pastor Oliver as he was moving out of the area and we're retiring. retiring. We're praying a, a replacement of his caliber comes back and comes into Brockton. Um, and then uh, I actually, a good old fashioned one, tin race, you know, it's like a, you know, I go to Tin Rays, and there's, you know, a good poor Senator Brady is having dinner there, and had to talk with him, and you know, and then uh, and then I saw him at a funeral that we had for my neighbor, the uh, firefighter from 9/11 uh, in New York City, and what I didn't realize is that he had already retired, and he threw on his gear and went to Ground Zero. And, uh, but also learn something else about him. And this is the guy who lives next to me, you know, and, uh, his father was also a fireman, but he was also the fire chief of New York city. Wow. So it's in their, it was in their blood. But again, you know, Senator Brady stayed for the entire service. We headed over at Waite funeral home. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to be coming over to the expo, but the, I think I talked to Greg and he may be over. Nice. So. You know, we all want to make an impact in our community, and that's what we're all about. And uh, there's a lot of good organizations here. 
that are always represented in this room. But there's others that are out there too that we need to get the word to them that, hey, come be part of something exciting here in Brockton. So, um, so the expo is real easy. I'm going to have the doors open at 9 o'clock in the morning. There will be heat. Um, <laughs> even if I'm having a campfire in the center of the floor, uh, there will be heat. And uh, I'll be here by 9 so that people can come in and set up their tables. And we open at 10, go to 3, and then we close down at, uh, at we, well, we'll be out of there by 4, 4.30 by the time it's all said and done. The only thing we'll do is make sure that we have it set up for uh, the Brockton Bruisers for their next practice. Um, <laughs> they were very gracious, and they set up the chairs for last Saturday when we had the Irish concert. And so that was, you know, so much, so helpful. And um, let's see, what else was there that was on my mind tonight? Oh, da, 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 da. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's season. Yes. Having it on one day is not enough. <laughs> um, actually, um, it's, they're not in Brockton, but in Canton, the Irish Cultural Center mm -hmm. is reopening their pub oh, tomorrow that's evening. Wonderful. And, uh, that's a long time. In Canton at the Irish Cultural Center. And it's, it's in an industrial park. Yeah. Yeah, they have like 49 acres or something. Yeah, yeah, they do all the Irish sports there. They have many pitches. Yeah, they have many pitches. So they, um, they do. Uh, on, on, on Friday eve on Friday evenings, there's a um, what they call the Friday night session. So any musician can show up and play. It's great. They're having concerts all the time. It, it's a great facility. Um, they have a, they have a research library as well. It's not as big as ours. Um, well, you know, I just had somebody else email me yesterday asking about donating a collection. And uh, Frank is working with me. We're trying to get some things over that the Brockton Public Library no longer want, and it's like microfilm. I think we counted eight filing cabinets, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, filled with microfilm of the New York Times from the very beginning to yeah. till now, pretty much. Please. You know, so it's, you know, we have the readers here, we have the scanner here for it. So it's, again, it's, it's vital information that oftentimes is just getting tossed. And in, our, in one of our rooms there, I have an entire bookcase full of books that were being tossed by public libraries. And so now we have the largest collection of the Massachusetts 1850 um, vital records, up to 1850. We have the largest, we have 30 more volumes than the state says exists. But, the, you know, the book's in there. So... Uh, Again, just one of the things that's offered. And so we want to uh, let people know that. So let's be there on the 26th. Yeah. And uh, again, yeah, if, and, and this was mentioned earlier about the uh, Brockton in your hands. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, it works. Um, it was missing several things. And uh, I picked up on it right away and sent in and said, fix this, this, this. And, uh, oh, by the way, here's a list, you know. For some reason, they were really light on churches. So, but there's a lot of churches in there now. Um, not all the churches in Brockton, but a lot of them. So, uh, we are just so thrilled with what's going on. And uh, we're looking forward to next month. Well, actually, we're looking forward to the 26th first. Then we can worry about the second Thursday of the month. All right. Well, that's easy enough. So, hey, thank you, everyone, for coming out tonight. Thank you uh, for BCA being here to record this so that other Brocktonians will soon know what's going on. And all you Brocktonians, you're invited to come on March 26th to the Expo and learn what there's uh, nonprofits and volunteer organizations are doing in our city.